We praise the name of the living God. We give God glory and praise and honor. Uh, before everything, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name and we give you glory and praise for this opportunity. Here we are before your face. We are about to hear your word. That we ask you to speak to us in the name of Jesus. Your word is life. Your word is everything. We are believing in the logos and the realm of God this morning. Your logos and realm is able to change, to deliver, to set free, to bless, to heal. Because your word is the same yesterday, today and forever. Thank you Father for your word. In Christ Jesus name as we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Glory be to God. We bless the name of the living God this morning. We say glory and praise be to Yahweh for this opportunity. And we are going forward. We are going forward in our teaching. We, are start, we started about the, 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 the way of the ego on the air. We are going forward on that. About the way of the ego on the air. And uh, we're going to go forward to continue our teaching. But uh, concerning the way of the ego on the air. We was touching something very important about the hunting of the ego. I think is where we, we started last Sunday. Last Sunday we was talking about the hunting of the ego. Is where we was. About the hunting of the ego. How the ego do hunt because the ego is supreme in fishing. The ego is supreme in hunting. The ego is supreme. Hallelujah somebody. The ego is supreme in hunting. And we, be, we began to talk about the hunting of the ego last Sunday. And uh, today, we're going to continue by God's grace about the hunting of the ego because the big title is still uh, the way of the ego in the air. We're on the seventh part. We're on the seventh part. This is the seventh part. The seventh part of this teaching. If you miss it, I really request, I would like you to consider to get all the, the, the parts one, part two, part three, part four, five, six, because this is the part seven. We thank God for his grace. As we are going forward, let us read the Bible in the book of Naom. In the book of Naom uh, is the book actually many people they don't read. Uh, somebody will say, what? We are in the book of Naom chapter one. Naom chapter 1, verse 3. We're going to just read chapter 1, verse 3. Naom chapter 1, verse 3. The book says, I'm starting in the Amplified Bible. The Bible says, the Bible says very clearly, it says, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and he will no mean clear the guilty. The Lord has his way in the willing wind and in the storm and the cloud are the dust of his feet. That is our concern. The Bible says the cloud are the dust of his feet. That means the cloud are the dust of the feet of God. The cloud are the dust of the feet of the Most High. Let's read uh, King James. The Bible said, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. He will not at all accuse the wicked. The Lord had his way in the willing wind, in the storm, and the cloud of the dust of his feet. Hallelujah. We thank God for, for this. New Living Translation, the Bible says, The Lord is slow to get angry, but His power is great. And He never let the guilty to go and punish. He displays power in the willing wing and the stone and the blowing cloud are the dust beneath His feet. At the New Living Translation. I thank God for this and uh, we're going to go direct in the book of uh, let's go direct in the book of uh, number very important 
We are going in the book of number. Hallelujah, somebody. We are in the book of number chapter 9. Number chapter 9. We are, we, we are we going to begin verse 15. The Bible said this. Number chapter 9. From verse 15. Hallelujah. The Bible says. I'm starting in Amplify Bible. And on that day that the tabernacle was erected. The cloud of God's presence cover the tabernacle that is the tent of the testimony and at the evening it was over the tabernacle having the appearance of a pillar of fire until the morning I'm reading New Living Translation on the day that the tabernacle was set up the cloud covered it but from evening until morning, the cloud over the tabernacle looked like a pillar of fire. King James, the Bible says, On that day that the tabernacle was raised up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony. And at evening, or at, at evening, and they say, and even there was upon the tabernacle, as it were appearance of fire, until morning. Verse 16, to amplify. So it was constantly the cloud cover it by day, and the appearance of fire by night. 17. Whenever the cloud was taken up, from over the tent after the Israelite journey and in the place where the cloud rested there the Israelite encamped verse 18 at the Lord's command the Israelite journeyed and at his command they camped as long as the cloud rested upon the tabernacle they remained encamped Verse 19, I still in Amplify Bible. Even when the cloud carried upon the tabernacle, many days, the Israelites kept the Lord charge and did not set out. Verse 20. And sometimes the cloud was only few days upon the tabernacle, but according to the command of the Lord, they remained. And camp, and at his command, the journey. Verse 21, amplify Bible always. And sometimes the cloud remained over the tabernacle from evening only until morning. But when the cloud was taken up, the journey, whether it was taken up by day, by night, the journey. Hallelujah, somebody. Verse 22 in Amplify. Whether it was two days or a month or a longer the time that the cloud carried upon the tabernacle, dwelling on it, the Israelites remained in camp. But when it was taken up, the journey. Oh, glory be to God. Verse 23. At the command of the Lord, they remained in camp. At his command, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord. At the command of the Lord, through Moses. Oh, la siga stereboki. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh. Let's go. Back in the book of Exodus. Exodus 24. We are Exodus 24. We are reading Exodus chapter 24. Verse 9 to 10. Hallelujah, somebody. My God. 
Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the seventy, and the seventy of the elders of Israel went up to the mountain side. Then Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and the seventy of the elders of Israel went up. the God of Israel that is convincing manifestation of his presence and under his feet it was like the pavement of the bright sapphire stone like the very heavenly in clearness oh that will be too long I'm reading verse 10 but I'm reading in the new living translation there they saw the god of israel under his feet they were seemed to be a surface of brilliant blue laps as clear as the sky itself wow glory be to god there they saw the god of israel under his feet seemed like a surface of brilliant blue La simple azul, as clear as the sky itself. Let me read. We are still on verse 10. I'm reading King James now. They saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were the paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were the body of the heaven in his clearness. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Too many scripture today. Let's go in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 66, 66 verse 1. The last book of Isaiah, verse 1. Thus said the Lord, heaven is my throne. And the earth is my footstool. May God change logos to Rema. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Whatever you are. Whatever you are. Whatever you are. Hallelujah. Oh my God. La prosiga stele bogi. Me satabaya. Me satabaya. La go se brada diga stele bosigi. Loga basi gastele bugidi, la brada ni gastele bushi, la gista la basi ke. Hallelujah, glory be to God. We thank God. We bless God for His grace. Uh, as I say, we are talking about the hunting of the ego. Under the big title, we have the way of ego in the air. We are on the seventh part. I would not like to repeat myself because I'll not have time. I don't have time enough. If I can repeat myself, I will not preach today. Let's start the way I stopped last Sunday. I was talking about the hunting of the ego. You know, the ego is supreme in hunting. Or oh, the ego I'm discussing is Yahweh. The Bible says in the book of uh, in the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 19. The way of the ego in the air. This is the man of God wanted to know the way of the ego in the air. He said there are three things I don't understand. Four of them is amazing. It's beyond me. One of it is said the way of the ego in the air. Normally, whenever the ego pass, there is not any sign on his back which you can see this is where the ego has passed but the man of God wanted to understand to know to see the sign of an ego the way of an ego whenever it's passing on the air where we was last Sunday in the book of uh, Job chapter 39 from verse 27 God was asking Job, 
is by your command a ego mount up it's by your command that ego can go high job was not able to give the answer to the mosai god said to job in the in the book of job chapter 39 he said when the ego is on the mountain top from there is able to hunt his prey in verse 29 chapter 39 verse 29 of the book of Job. he said from the top when the ego is on eye is hunting his prey is founding his prey or his meat his food when he's still so high in the heaven from there he can see clear When the ego is on the mountain top, he can see whatever he wants on the ground and he will leave his throne because I say heaven is the jurisdiction of that ego. The ego lives in the air. That's what the man of God said, the way of an ego in the air. He wanted to understand the way of an ego whenever it's passing on the air. But the man of God didn't get it. Thank God today, the Lord will begin to explain us about it. This is the key point. God said, from the top, when the ego is on top, is hunting his prey. But the ego was discussing is God. There is no fishing. There is no hunting if the ego is still in heaven. The ego have to leave his throne. The ego have to leave the mountain top. Oh my God. The ego have to leave his mountain top. When the ego is on the mountain top, from there he can see so clear. He shall leave his throne, his jurisdiction. He shall leave his palace. Begin to fly to come to get whatever he saw on the ground. As I said, the only bird it can carry the snake on the air is the ego. The ego, whenever I want to kill a snake, it will come and step on the snake and it grab the snake by his talon and it will take the snake high. But normally the, the snake don't live in heaven. The snake, you cannot find the snake in the sky. You're going to find the snake on the ground. But whenever the eagle wants to kill the snake, it will take the snake so high. And the Bible says in the book of Matthew, when John Baptist was baptizing people, the Bible said the Pharisees, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they came to get baptized. And John looked at to them. He said, you brood of viper, the generation of snake, who taught you to flee the graph of God? People, they came to get baptized. But John is calling them, they are the generation of snake. That you are saying, it's only the snake they will get to heaven. Because righteous people, they didn't come to get baptized. Only snakes, they came to get baptized. As I said, when in the book of Acts, chapter 10, when Apostle Peter was praying, he saw that shit came from heaven. On that shit, he saw all the type of the reptile, like the snake, the lizard, all kind of the stuff. The impure stuff was on that shit. And God spoke to the, to the Apostle Peter in chapter 10 of Acts, kill and eat. Apostle said, I can't. Because they are, they are not clean. God said, kill and eat. He said, I cannot because it's not clean. God said, whatever I call clean, you can't call it is unclean. Whatever I sanctify, you cannot declare it is a only. The point here is this. God was talking about the people. But... Those people, they was gentle. They was not Jew. 
But Apostle Peter was seeing dead on the sheet snake, lizard, all kind of unclean stuff. God said, They are my people, they are sanctified already. Apostle Peter said, No, they are not clean. But human being, in the revelation, Apostle was seeing the snake, all kind of bad stuff. But God is saying to him, You need to kill and eat. Though to another one, you need to accept these people. But they are snake. How I can accept them? That's why we explain that day when John, but John Baptist was baptizing, people who they came to get baptized, they were snake. John said, You generation of snake, why you are running the growth of God? Because they don't want to go to hell. They decide to come to get baptized, to get saved. Oh, that is the hunting of the ego. Whenever the ego left his throne, is coming down to hunt. It will, cut, it will grab the snake, the fish. The fish is not live in the sky. But the, the ego, it will take the fish in the sky. The ego, it will take the snake in the sky. Or oh, the ego I'm discussing is God in the book of uh, Exodus 19 verse 4. The Bible says, you see, I have carried you by ego's wings. God said, I have carried you by ego's wings. From the land of Egypt to take you to my place. The God was carrying the people under the wings of an eagle. What that mean? It means God is an eagle. Because say, I was carrying you under my wings, under the wings of an eagle. But you are you are God. He said, No, I was carrying you under the wings of an eagle. Just to show you, God is the ego. As I said, the hunting of the ego. This morning, I want to give you the idea. The ego used to stuff one is hunting. Is using his flexible talon. And is using his beak. That means his mouth. Whenever the ego, the ego is hunting, he will grab the prey by his talon, by his feet. The feet of the ego is so flexible. Whenever he, he saw something, he will come on it, he will step on the stuff, on whatever that things to be a snake, to be a goat, to be a rat. Whatever it can be, if the snake, I mean, if the ego decide to get it, it will step on that things. And when he step on it, he will grab it by his feet, by his flexible talon. And he will catch the stuff and take it on the sky. The next, the next things will come, he will begin to kill it by his mouth, by his beak. He's using the beak. To kill the stuff. This is the hunting of the ego. But what this is meaning in spiritual realm. I want to discuss about the feet of the ego. The hunting of the ego through, the, through his feet. Through his flexible talon. Because whenever the ego is hunting. is using his flexible talon. To grab the prey. When God said in Exodus 19, verse 4, you see, I have carried you by the ego's wings. That means God is an ego. If you have the ego's wings, he has the feet of an ego too. If you have the wings of an ego, he has the feet of an ego too. If you need to understand God is an ego, you read the Bible. In the book of Exodus, if you read Numbers, if you read Leviticus, you're going to realize God is an ego. It's all about the blood. It's all about the, the meat. It's all about sacrifice. That's the way the ego lives. 
That is the way that ego live. The tabernacle, it was about just killing goat, lambs. That is the food of an ego. That is the food of ego. But this morning, where we came to read in the book of Naum, chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible says something amazing. The Lord is slow to anger, great in power, and will by no means clear the guilty. The Lord has his way in the willing wind, in the storm, and the cloud are the dust of his feet. Wow. The cloud are the dust. I, I would like you to, to, I'm not interpreting yet. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. The Bible says that dust of his feet is the cloud. The cloud is the dust of the feet of God. Wow. Nobody ever taught me this. The Bible says the cloud are the dust of the feet of God. Okay. The way of an ego in the air. Now I can begin to understand it by this verse. When we are talking about the way of an ego in the air, when we are talking about the hunting of the ego, if you need to know the way of an ego, thank you, Jesus. You need to understand his steps. How? The Bible says, where we read in the book of Number, chapter 9, from verse 15 to verse 21, 22. The Bible says, when Moses set up the tabernacle, the cloud, the cloud, came to cover the tent, the tabernacle. Okay. But in the book of Naom, that said the cloud are the dust of the feet of God. Help me God. The cloud are the dust of the feet of Yahweh. The cloud the cloud are the, the dust of the feet of Yahweh. Now the Bible says in the book of Numbers chapter 9, from verse 15, when the tabernacle was set up, the glory of God, and the Bible said that cloud covered the tabernacle. The cloud covered the tabernacle. Oh, la sika telebogia. The cloud cover the tabernacle. Now we can see when they're talking about the cloud, they're talking about the feet of God. Normally, the cloud is not terrestrial. The cloud is celestial. You, 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 it's hard to see the cloud on the ground. The cloud is in heaven. If you look at on heaven, you can see the cloud. You can see the cloud. When we are, maybe you are flying in airplane, you can see how heaven is filled with the cloud. Or the sky is filled with sky, I mean with cloud. And the man of God say in the book of Proverbs chapter 30 verse 19, the way of an eagle in the air. But only in the air is where that's where you're going to find the cloud. Because in the air, Laka Satabadu. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I receive you. The cloud is in the sky. I mean on the sky. You can see that the cloud on the ground. When human being is walking on the sand, on the ground, is leaving his print, is leaving his, uh, his print or his sign 
whenever it's passed, you can say this was a baby who passed on this way. It was a grown-up person who passed on this way. But whenever the eagle is passing on the sky, there is no way he can put it, he can, he can leave, or he can leave his print behind him because on the sky there is no place you can put that, I mean, your feet. But the Bible says no. The Bible says the cloud are the dust of the feet of Yahweh. That means whenever Yahweh is walking, Yahweh is invisible. Yahweh is invisible. But the cloud are visible. Yahweh is invisible. But the cloud are visible. Yahweh is invisible. But the cloud are visible. That means the cloud you can see. But you can't see Yahweh on your physical eyes. Yahweh is a spirit. But the cloud are physical. You can see it on physical eyes. That's what the Bible says. When Moses built the tabernacle, the cloud came to cover the tabernacle. The Bible says on that day, it was the pillar of the cloud in the night. It became the pillar of fire. The, the cloud was on the top of the tabernacle. The cloud was on the top of the tabernacle. Now watch this. Whenever they are sitting in the wilderness, if the cloud lifted up, is taken up from the tabernacle, anybody, you have to get your back ready. You have to get your luggage ready because you are starting the journey. It's not Moses who was telling the people we are about to start the journey. No. It's the cloud which was showing or letting people know we are starting the journey. That means whenever the cloud begins to move, people they have to move. Whenever the cloud rests on the tabernacle, Nobody will move. Or oh, the Bible says in Naom, the cloud are the feet. The cloud are the dust of the feet of God. Now you can get idea and to see clearly, God was on the top of the tabernacle. If we begin to walk, people they can't see it because God is spirit. But they will understand God begin to move by the cloud, by the dust of his feet. By the dust of his feet is where people will understand, no, God is moving. Get your luggage, get everything ready. We are starting the journey because God begins to move. How you can tell? Because the cloud is already taken up. But the cloud, the Bible says, is the, is the dust of the feet of God. Whenever you are walking on the ground, if you are walking on the ground, if you are walking on the sand, you can see that dust on your feet. Whenever you put your leg, you lift it, you put your leg, you shall see that dust under your feet. It's the same with God. Whenever God begins to walk, you can see His feet, you can see His step through the dust which is the cloud now you see I know many people that are not getting it yet many people that are failing in life lack of knowing the way of ego because whenever the ego is passing on the ground I mean on the air there is no sign but the sign is by the cloud because the ego I'm discussing is God. If you need to know the sign of ego, if you need to know the prince of the ego, if you need to know the way of the ego, if you need to know where the ego has stepped, you need to study the cloud. Because God is the ego I'm discussing here. 
No, to know God is moving, to know the print, the sign of God, where is passing, where is going, by studying the dust, by studying the cloud. The same way people of Israel did in the wilderness. They could not see God on their eyes, but they could see the dust of his feet. The dust of his feet, it was the cloud. I know we talk about the cloud, about the Holy Ghost. I know we talk about the cloud, about all of us, but I'm not going in that direction this morning. I'm not going in that direction this morning. I'm going in different direction. The cloud. Now, somebody will begin to ask me, the cloud, what do you mean, doctor? There are a lot of cloud. I'm not talking those type of the cloud. I'm talking about the cloud of God. And I will explain it. The cloud are the dust of the feet of God. You know, whenever the ego is passing, if you know to know his way, you need to study his feet. Or you shall know his feet by the dust. Or the dust is the cloud. One day, in the book of uh, Genesis, in the book of Genesis, chapter 18, God was passing, was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. On his way going, when Abraham saw God, he said, my Lord, please, allow me to give you something to eat. Please, if you can rest a little bit under this tree so I can offer you the food. But before anything, allow me to wash your feet. So I can take away the dust which is on your feet. Why Abraham wanted only to wash the feet of God? Because if you need to know the way of somebody, you shall know it by his feet. If you need to know the way of somebody, you shall know it by his feet. The Bible says Abraham washed the feet of God. No wonder why they're talking about Abraham as the father of faith. He knew God because he understood the way of God. Because he washed the feet of God. The secret of God is on his feet. The secret of God is on his feet. That's why an ego is a secret of power is on his feet. If you can understand the feet of an ego, if you can understand the feet of God, you are blessed. Abraham washed the feet of God. And he understood the way, the step of God. Because under his feet there was the dust the dust but the dust I'm talking about this morning is not the cloud you can see because every cloud no this is not the type of the cloud I'm discussing this morning that is not the type of the cloud I'm discussing this morning I'll begin to discuss just two types of the cloud which can help you to understand the feet of the ego. Hallelujah. I'll begin to discuss just two types of the cloud which will help you to understand the way of the ego. Because whenever you pass on the ground, you put your feet, it's easy to tell this is the print of a human. Now to understand the print of the ego, to understand the print of God, you need to study the dust. Because the people of Israel in the wilderness, whenever the cloud begin to move, they know God is on his journey. We have to go. You know, if you don't know the way of ego, you can't walk with God. God can start the journey, you're still sitting. God can begin to move, you are still sitting. God can begin to do stuff, you are still sitting. You are still waiting as many people today 
they said they're waiting on God they're still waiting waiting to wait is good whenever they was waiting they was paying attention to the cloud they are waiting but they are paying attention to the cloud the Bible say it can the cloud can rest a day on the tabernacle or the cloud can rest a month or a week or a years it's depend to his will whenever he want to rest for a year two years he will be there two years whenever he just have to he want to spend a day he will spend just one a day and begin to move the problem is you to pay attention many of us we are not paying attention to the cloud of God many of us we are not paying attention to the cloud of God we are so busy when the cloud begin to move we are still busy when the cloud begin to rise up we are still busy and at the end of the day he said since I pray nothing is changing but the cloud he was moving he was not moving the cloud is now waiting on you. You are the one you're waiting on the cloud. If the cloud started the journey, you have to start the journey too. There is no excuses. Oh, I'm busy. I'm tired. I have to rest a little bit. No. If the cloud begin to move, read the book of number chapter 9. You're going to understand what I'm saying. If the cloud begin to move, there is no excuse. When God begin to move in your life, there is no excuse. There is no reason you can say I'm busy. I can we can do it next year. We can do it. No. Whenever what whatever you are doing, if the cloud begin to to go to that different direction, follow the cloud. But you can say this is not what I studied in school. This is what what and what. No. They never question the cloud. Whenever the cloud begin to move, simple things they do. They follow the cloud. I want you to consider this but the cloud i'm talking about this morning because when i'm saying the cloud there are a lot of cloud the cloud i'm discussing this morning there are two types of the cloud i'll begin to discuss hallelujah somebody first of the cloud i'll begin to discuss is in the book of number chapter 9 verse 15 the cloud on the tabernacle the cloud it came on the tabernacle this is the cloud i want to discuss first of all the cloud is the body of water first of all the cloud is the body of water inside of the cloud there are nothing only the water and I know we have the empty cloud but the cloud of the feet of God the abundance of rain inside the cloud I'm talking this morning which is the, is the dust of the feet of God is the cloud which was on the tabernacle you cannot follow any cloud you have to follow the cloud which was on the tabernacle normally when we are talking about the tabernacle we are discussing about one person who is that person is jesus christ who is that person is jesus christ who is that person is jesus christ jesus is the tabernacle the cloud which was on the tabernacle simply mean the spirit of God which was in Christ the Bible say in the book of uh, Roman if the spirit which resurrected Jesus dwell in you he shall vitalize he shall quicken your mortal body if the spirit that resurrected the Lord Jesus who is Jesus is the tabernacle now the bible says if the spirit that resurrected him if the spirit that was in him is in you it shall quicken it shall fertilize it shall give life to your mortal body 
the cloud are the body of water. The cloud is just carrying water. The water which the cloud is carrying is the word of God. To another word, people in the wilderness, they was not guided by a prophet. <laughs> in the wilderness, people they was not guided by the prophet, but they was guided by the cloud. Oh, the cloud is the body of water. The body of water, the water of life is Jesus. The word of life is the word of God. Now to another word, Moses and the people, they was depending to the cloud. I'm so tired today, prophet leading people. I'm so tired today, thousands of prophets leading the people. Listen to me. In the wilderness, Moses didn't know the way. He was talking about even to his... Uh, brother-in-law Moses was discussing with his brother-in-law you know the wilderness better can you help us to be our eyes be our eyes please because I don't know the wilderness Moses is a prophet the Bible said there was no prophet like Moses who spoke to God face to face in the wilderness it's not Moses who was leading the people it's the cloud is the cloud is the cloud who was leading the people no wonder why today people are failing because most of them they are guided by a prophet a prophet and the people they have to depend to the cloud the prophet and the people they have to depend to the cloud or the cloud is the dust of the feet of yahweh all the dust of the feet of Yahweh is the word of God. The cloud I'm discussing this morning is the cloud which is carrying water. The cloud I'm discussing this morning is the cloud which is carrying the abundance of rain inside of it. Moses and people, those depending to the cloud, the cloud, the Bible said in the book of Naom, chapter 1, verse 3, the cloud are the dust of the feet of God. To another word, Moses and people, they was following the step of God. They was following the dust of the feet of God. Though whenever that, the cloud is taken up, the cloud begin to move. People, they will begin to follow the cloud. You know, today, we have people that are following a prophet. We have people that are following a prophet. We have to follow the cloud to be a prophet, to be the people. We have to follow the cloud. We have to follow the cloud. Because if a prophet and the people that are following the cloud, nobody will get lost. Nobody will get... The mistake we have today many of us we want people to follow us instead of to follow God we want people to follow us instead of to follow God you know when we talk about you somebody will say yes people that was led by Mo Moses died on the way now, if the people are following Moses, they have, to, they have to get limited where Moses died. Moses died, but the cloud didn't die. The cloud was still on the tabernacle, but Moses passed away. But the cloud never passed away. Moses passed away, Moses died. But the cloud never died. This is the problem we have today. We need to take the focus of people to Yahweh, not to us. It's a blessing to be a man of God. It's a blessing to be a woman of God. It's a blessing to be who you are. But in the wilderness, the Bible says, whenever the cloud is number, number chapter 9, I'm in the book of number chapter 9 from verse 15. I'm talking about the way of ego in the air. I'm in the hunting of the ego on the feet 
of the eagle. Whenever the cloud begins to move, people they will move. Whenever the cloud begins to move, people they will move. Now, this is the point. The cloud are the body of water. There is no rain without the cloud. There is no rain without the cloud. For the, the rain to come, we need to see the cloud. Or the cloud is just carrying water inside of it. The cloud is just carrying water inside. But the key point is, the Bible says in the book of Naum, the cloud are the dust. Are the dust. If you need to know the step of God, if you need to know the way of ego, it's easy. Study the cloud. The cloud is the body of water. The body of water is the word of God. The body of water is the word of God. It's in God's word where you go to see the step, the print of Yahweh, where is passing, what is doing, is in his word. To have a man of God is a blessing. To have a woman of God is a blessing. Remember, all of us, we have to depend to the cloud. Nobody knows the way. Nobody. It's only the cloud knows the way. Oh, the cloud is the word of God. The word of God says, I am the way. I am the way. I is. Remember when the word of God came into feet. He said, I am the way. I am the life. The truth. The, I am the way. I am the way. He said, I am the way. What? He said, he is the way. That means he, everlasting life. He is the way. Jesus said, he is the way. He is the way. No wonder why the cloud knew the way in the wilderness. Is the cloud who was leading the people from place to place until to the destination. From place to place. It's only the cloud can lead you. It's only that having a prophet is a blessing. Having a, a, I mean, a pastor is a blessing. Having an apostle is a blessing. Having what, whatever the man of God you have is a blessing. But you and your man of God, you and your, the woman of God you have, you have to depend to the word of God. Far from the word of God, excuse me, goodbye. I follow the word of God. Follow the word of God. Because it's the word of God which is the cloud. The cloud is the dust of the feet of Yahweh. So if you still need to know the print, if you need to know the print of the ego, is in his word. Because in the physical eyes, you can see where the ego is passing. But if you begin to study God's word, you can see the print of ego. That means you can see the print of God. You can see where God is passing, what God is doing. You can see it, you can understand it by his word. Whenever the cloud was taken up, people they start the journey. Moses, the cloud was not asking Moses if he want to start the journey. No. No matter Moses could be busy or people busy, the cloud will never taken up. Moses and people they line up to start the journey. Moses and the people they line up. Nobody will tell us. I will tell the cloud. Oh, you know people they are busy. You know, let's see. no, no. Moses and the people they line up to start that journey because the cloud. But Naomi said, "Is the dust of the feet of God?" The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, "Heaven is my throne; the earth is my footstool. The earth, the earth, or the tabernacle was on earth." The tabernacle was on earth. Remember, God called Moses in the book of Exodus. He says, see, you shall do the same. The way you see on the mountain. Moses went down. He built the tabernacle on the ground. He built the tabernacle on terra. He built the tabernacle on the earth. 
and God say the earth is my footstool God say the earth is my footstool or Naom said the cloud and the dust of the feet of God is set on the throne no the cloud are the dust of his feet that's what I'm saying the tabernacle the cloud which was on the top it was only the, the feet of God on the tabernacle the cloud which was on the top it was the feet of God because the cloud is the dust of the feet of God that's why I say I'm not talking about the cloud as you know as they preach at you about the Holy Ghost no I'm talking about the cloud as the dust of the feet of God The Bible said Jesus is the tabernacle. But the Bible said Jesus, he humbled himself. Until to death, he became obedience. He's talking about the humility. Because he became a human. Human being. God is set on the throne. The tabernacle is where God put his feet. No wonder why the tabernacle is just what God revealed to Moses. But God is greater than the tabernacle. God is greater than the tabernacle. The tabernacle is representing Jesus. But that the cloud which was on the top is the feet of God. He has to be the feet because in the wilderness people they wanted somebody to guide to lead them or you can lead by walking you can guide by walking not by sitting you can lead the people guide the people by sitting on the chair as most of us we do no that's why people they cannot walk if god cannot start walking you know what God, Moses said, sp I mean, spoke to God? If you cannot go with us, nobody will live here. Why? You are the one you are on the top of the tabernacle. You are the one you are the cloud. The cloud is the dust of your feet. If you can't walk, that means we cannot go. There is no way to go away. Because the cloud is not moving. When God said, I cannot go with you, that means the cloud is not move. Because the cloud are the dust of his feet. You can only see that dust when somebody is walking. That's why whenever the dust was taken up, it began to go, to move. People, they have to go. People, they have to move. The key point here is this. Moses and people, those relying, relying on the cloud, which is the dust of the feet of God. Oh my God, help me. The first cloud I'm talking about here, the first cloud is the cloud which was on the tabernacle. This is the cloud to lead all of us. Far from this cloud, forget it. This is the cloud, is the body of water. The body of water is the word of God. Jesus is the word become flesh. Jesus is a body, but the word, Christ, in him. Though Jesus was carrying Christ, Jesus was a body to carry Christ. The cloud is the body to carry water. The cloud is a body, is carrying just water inside. It's just like Jesus, he was carrying Christ inside of him. Now the key point here is, you and I, we have to depend to the cloud. We have to depend to the cloud, somebody. I don't care who you are, we have to depend to the cloud. We have to depend to the cloud. Hallelujah. We have to depend to the cloud. In the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 39, the Bible says, Mary, she was sitting on the feet, on the feet, on the feet of Yeshua. 
Mary, she was sitting on the feet of Jesus, listening the word of God. On the feet. Or the people in the wilderness, they were, they were sitting on the feet because Naomi said chapter 1 verse 3, the cloud and the dust of the feet of God. That means on the tabernacle, the feet of God was on the top. The everybody that was under the feet of God. Everybody, Moses and the people that was under the feet of God. Because the dust was on the top of the tabernacle. What I mean is the cloud, because the cloud are the dust of the feet of God. And the Bible say, Mary, in chapter 10 of Luke, chapter 39, she was sitting on the feet. Why on the feet? Why on the feet? The Bible say, she was learning, listening to the word of God. This is what we need to do. This is the way of the ego. The hunting of the ego, the ego always kill, catch, grab the prey. He grabbed the prey by his feet, by his flexible talon. Mary, under the feet of Jesus, remember Mary, she was a prostitute woman. Remember, Mary, she was a prostitute woman. Whenever the ego stepped on something, he can miss. Now, Mary being under the feet, that means she was like a snake. Jesus grabbed her. Jesus catch her. And there was no way Mary could move. No wonder why until she died, she never went back to evil way. Because she was under the feet. Whenever the feet of the ego grab something, is over. The stuff have to get done. Whenever the feet of the ego, the talon of the ego, the talon of the ego, whatever he grabs something, is over. Is over. Mary, the Bible said, Luke chapter 10, 39, she was on the feet. Who is Jesus? Is the ego. Who is Jesus? Is God. God said, I carried you by the wings of an ego because I am an ego. Exodus 19, verse 4. Mary being under the feet of God, that means she was stepping on by ego. Who is the ego? Is Jesus. She was Mary. He was under the feet of the ego. She never went back to prostitution. You know many people they are running back to the evil way where we came from because they are not under the feet of the ego. Because when the ego is stepped on you, when his talon grab you, he catch you, you can't escape. If somebody go back to the foolish stuff we left, simply to understand is he never be under the feet of the ego. Because if you are under the feet of the ego, you can't escape. You can't escape to be a snake, to be a goat. Wherever you can be, you can't to be a fox. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't escape. No way. Mary, she was caught by the feet of an ego. She was a prostitute woman. But when the ego located Mary, it came on up. Because she was a prey God wanted. I said she was because we are the children of God. The desire of God is to save us. That's why he left his throne. He came to die. That means he loved us so much. We are the type of the stuff is heart love. Whenever an ego love likes something, it will come to catch it, to kill it. Jesus left his throne. He came to get us, to kill us in sin so he can rise us in holiness, in righteousness. Mary, she was, Jesus killed Mary in sin's life and raised Mary in holiness life, in the life of fear of God. Mary, she never went back in evil way because she was under the feet. The Bible said, Mary, she was sitting under the feet. To another word, the ego grabbed her. 
the eagle captured her and there was no way Mary could escape you know why you are escaping because you are not under the feet of eagle because if you are under the talon of the eagle because I'm talking about the hunting of the eagle if you are under the talon of the eagle you can't escape you can't escape the flexible talon of the eagle no way you can jump when he got you is over is over you're going to die in sin to rise in holiness to rise in righteousness in the newness of life not in the evil life we used to have but the bible said mary she was sitting under the feet of the eagle this is the hunting of the eagle he said i came not for good people i came for sinners to get to repent as he was preaching last sunday he said i came for evil people to get to repent that means his hunting is to evil people he's looking evil people that snake like me snake like you he grabbed us he touched us here we are here we are under the feet of the eagle the cloud i'm talking about is the word of god mary she was sitting on the feet she was sitting on the feet and you need to understand jesus is god which i'm discussing here mary being under his feet that mean mary she was caught grabbed by jesus and there is no way she could escape the first cloud as i said is the cloud which was on the tabernacle which moses and the people there was depending on it today if a prophet can depend on the cloud i say it's not the prophet of god if a prophet cannot depend on the cloud i say it's not the prophet of god because moses was depending on the cloud who are you not to depend on the cloud that the, the cloud i'm talking about the word of god who are you not to depend on the word of god there are a lot of prophet trying to depend on the vision no in the word of god is god who will give you the vision is god who will open your eyes to see stuff not is your eyes which will open god to see the stuff god's word first God's word first. God's word first. Moses and the people, they was depending on the cloud, the feet. I mean, the, 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 the dust of the feet of God. Or the cloud is, as I say, is the body of water. It's carrying the abundance of rain. Let's read. I want to explain the second cloud now. Let's go in the book of first, first King, chapter 18. Chapter 18. Uh, I would like to read verse uh, 44. But you can read from verse 41 to 45. Uh, we all just take 44 because of time. The Bible said this. I'm starting to amplify Bible. And at the seventh time, the servant say, A cloud as small as a man's hand is arising out of the sea. Elijah said, Go up, say to Ahab, Hitch your chariot and go down, lest the rain stop you. The second cloud I'm discussing is the cloud in the form of a hand. The second cloud I'm, I'm discussing because I'm on the feet of the ego. The second cloud on the cloud I'm discussing is the cloud on as a man's hand. The cloud to the form, to the shape of a man's hand. The cloud to the form, to the shape of a man's hand. Are you with me, somebody? The second cloud I'm, I'm beginning to discuss is the cloud to the form, to the form, to the shape of the hands of a man, the end of a man. The Bible says, and Elijah was praying 
for the rains to come. I lost my case. As Elijah was praying for the rain to come, because the rain has stopped, a man of God had shut the heaven, no more rain. Now, is the same man of God, he have to open heaven for the rain to come. But something amazing happened. As the man of God was praying for heaven to all be open, something amazing happened. Is he suffered to one six times to check nothing was happening outside but on the seventh time on the seventh time when he went out he saw the cloud on the form of man's hand the bible say a cloud as the small as a man's hand he was arising this is the cloud I'm talking about. A cloud in the form of a head. The Bible says in the book of Naum, chapter 1, verse 3, the cloud are the dust, are the dust of the feet of God. Okay. Elijah was praying, the cloud arise. But the cloud are the, are, are the dust of the feet of God. And the Bible says, as Elijah pray, the cloud arise to the shape, to the form of a hand. <laughs> the dust of the feet of God is rising, is rising to the form, to the form of a hand. Or oh, when I can see the hand, I see number five. And when I'm seeing number five, I'm seeing only Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Because he saw the cloud rising in the form of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. He saw the cloud rising. He saw the cloud rising to the form, to the shape of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. You know what I'm talking about. It's the five ministry. It's the five ministry. The second cloud I want to discuss is the cloud to the form of a head. What that means? This means simply is the five ministry the five minister of God the five minister they are just the cloud. a man of God is a cloud carrying water a man of God is a cloud of God a man of God is the representer of God is like the feet of God God is sending you where he wants himself to go. He sends you to represent him. He sends you. Though you are like the feet of God. You are, you are representing God. You are under the feet of God. A man of God is the cloud. A man of God is the cloud. That's why a man of God who is empty cloud, pay attention on him. A real cloud, you have to carry water. The empty cloud is danger. The empty cloud is not from God. Because the real cloud of God, the real representer of God, the person who's representing God is by the word. You cannot present God being ignorant of his word. You cannot present God being ignorant. There is no way. God is light. God is knowledge. How you are representing somebody's knowledge, you are ignorant. It, it can't work. 
God is knowledge. God is light. God. A man of God is, is the cloud carrying the abundance of rain. The Bible says a man of God spoke to, Elijah spoke to the king. You need to rush to go because the abundance of rain is coming. Can I say Elijah was carrying that water in him? He was just calling heaven to release it. The rain was in Elijah. How? Because the word of God was in the mouth of Elijah. Elijah was carrying the word of God. That rain, it was in Elijah. No wonder why he was able to stop the rain. He was able to open the rain. Why? Because it's the career of rain. It's the career of the water. Elijah was carrying that rain. Because he's representing God. Because God is life. God is the word of life. A man of God, which is representing God, you have to carry water. You cannot be a man of God without carrying water. We have a thousand of empty cloud claiming themselves they belong to God, but they are not. In the book of Malachi, I can just end here because of my time. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. The Bible says, people they will come to a man of God because on the lips of a priest, they will find, they will learn knowledge. In the lips, in the lips, in the lips of a priest, they will come to learn, they will come to learn knowledge. They will come to learn knowledge. To the lips of a priest. That's why a man of God is the rain. The man of God is the cloud carrying water. Whenever you reach a place, you're going to release that water. People to, to profit water. People to get water. The what I'm discussing is the word of God. Whenever the man of God go, you have to release water. You have to give water, which is the word of God, to give it to people. Elijah pray. The Bible says the cloud in the form of man's hand it rise. You see, the real cloud whenever it's working he have to carry water. Jesus, he was himself the real minister full of water. Now how you can be a minister without water inside you? Moses was leading people full of water. Full of the word of God in him. The Bible says, let the word of God dwell richly in you. How you can lead and guide a people if the word of God is not in you? It's very important to be filled with the word of God. You know, as I said, the first the cloud are discussing is the word of God. The second is the man and the women of God. But they are carrying water. The real water, it will lead people to God. The real water will guide people to look at to God, not to us. Hallelujah, somebody. Very important. Very important. A man of God, a man of God, you have to carry water. I'm about to pray. You are representing God. You are representing God. Make sure you have water in you. Because the hunting of the ego, how ego do hunts? By using the water you are carrying to get, to get people. You know, I'm talking about the hunting of the ego, which is mean, whenever I go somewhere, whenever I go somewhere, whenever I go somewhere, God will hunt people through me. When I open my mouth, I begin to speak, I begin to speak, I begin to speak. God begin to save, to kill people in sin, to raise people in righteousness. Whenever I begin to speak, I begin to teach, people will get saved. Though God is hunting people through you, through me. Hallelujah, somebody. Very important. God is hunting people through you, through me. Very important. Because if 
You cannot open your mouth. If you cannot open your mouth, the hunting of the ego cannot happen. Apostle Paul is saying in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16, word to me if I cannot preach the gospel. It's like, cast to me if I cannot preach the gospel. A real cloud is, the, is, is a preacher of the good news. The hunting of the ego is discussing about the good feet on the mountain, which is declaring the good news. In the book of Naomi chapter 1, verse 3, where the Bible says, the clouds are the dust of the feet of God. If you go to verse 15, they say, Blessed are the, look at the feet of the person on the mountain, which is declaring the good news of God. Hallelujah. Very important. I want you to understand this. I want you really to understand this, somebody. It's very important. The hunting of the ego is happening through you, through me. Wherever you go, God will hunt people through you. When you open your mouth, you begin to speak. That means the ego begins to hunt the prey. It begins to kill to kill people through the word of God, to rise people in righteousness, to kill people in sin. But the ego cannot hunt today if you can't speak. It takes you, it takes me to speak for the ego to hunt people. The hunting of the ego I'm discussing is happening through you, is happening through me. That's what Apostle Paul said, word to me, cast to me if I cannot preach the gospel. No, I have to preach the gospel. If I cannot preach the gospel, it's like I am cast. Hallelujah. He said, if I cannot preach the gospel, word to me. I would like you to understand that. The hunting of the ego is happening through you, is happening through me. But whenever we begin to preach, the ego begins to work. If we can preach, the ego can do nothing. I say, if we can preach, the ego can do nothing. The ego is, is, is hunting prey through us, through you, and through me. Let's read the, the Bible in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 15. How can a man be expected to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, are beautiful are the feet. I lost my case. As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the glad tidings, that means the good news. How beautiful the feet. How beautiful the feet. Why? That, that means a preacher of the good news. His feet is beautiful. They're not discussing about my feet. They're not discussing about the feet of a woman or man of God. No, they're discussing about the feet of an ego. Because the ego, he kill, he hunt by his feet. Whenever the ego is on the mountain, if you want to hunt, to get something, he will use his feet. By using his flexible talon, he will fly to grab the prey by his talon. Now the Bible say, the, the, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. That preach the good news. That means the ego is saving people through you, through me. How beautiful the feet of the people who are preaching the good. They are not discussing your feet. Because it's only the feet of the ego is beautiful by saving. Can I say it's only the feet of the ego who preach the good news? To the snake, to the goat, to all those stuff which could not go to heaven. But the feet of the ego is able to carry them to heaven. Why? He shall leave his dwelling place, which is the heaven. He shall come down to catch, to grab the prey, to be a snake, whatever it can be, and he will take it to heaven. It will take you to heaven. This is the key point. 
If Jesus could not came, I could not get saved. If the eagle cannot leave the mountain to come to catch the snake, the snake cannot go high. Who cannot go to the sky? Who cannot go to heaven? That means it's the feet of ego who is beautiful for the good news. It's the feet of ego. Because when the ego leaves the throne, he leaves the mountain, he's coming down. It's the good news for the snake because the snake will die in evil way. He shall rise in the newness life. How beautiful the feet, the feet. I say I'm talking about the feet of ego. And the Bible said those who they are preaching, their feet is beautiful. Their feet. Why? Because an ego, he always kill, save by his feet. Now when you are preaching, an ego begin to catch the prey. Those people in fornication, in prostitution, in drug business, wherever it can be. When we begin to preach, when we begin to preach, the Bible says very clearly, those people, they can get saved. If we can preach, they can get saved. Now, that means an ego can do nothing if we can preach. The ego is living us. Whenever we preach, it begins to grab the prey. It begins to catch people. That means to save people. Now, you have the responsibility, I have the responsibility to speak to others about the good news. That way is that they go, they go to get saved. Through the feet of the ego. God bless you. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. If you never accept the Lord Jesus, I'll give you the opportunity to accept the Lord Jesus today. Just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I agree I am a sinner. I ask your grace and mercy to be upon me. Forgive my sin. I open my heart. I accept you as Lord and Savior. I give my love to you. Lead me. Guide me. All the days of my life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As you did this prayer. You are blessed. You are a child of God. And I'm going to pray for everyone. Father in the name of Jesus. I pray for my brother sister under my voice. May your grace to be upon everyone. May you bless. May you protect. May you cover. May you favor your people. In the name of Jesus. Those that are sick. I speak healing virtue in the name of Jesus. Those who they have finances issue, the end of God to assist them, whatever the case, whatever the situation they're going through, in the name of Jesus. The grace of God to be upon you, the favor of God to be upon you, the mercy of God to be upon you, in the name of Jesus. Your day, your week to be blessed. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord favor you. May the Lord protect you. In the name of Jesus, as you pray. And we say, Amen. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for spending this time with us. Hope to see you to the next week. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father. We give you glory and praise. We give you glory and praise. We give you glory and praise. Thank you, the Mosai. Thank you, Father.